Hello, everyone. Welcome to China Mosaic. I'm Luo Jun. Climate change is a universal challenge. According to a report concerning netizen behavior related to science, smog and its causes became the most popular topic among Chinese netizens in 2015. In Beijing, people are accustomed to heavy smog. The peculiar sight of neon signs seemingly floating in midair is an almost ordinary occurrence. And it's nothing strange to find that one of the city's landmark buildings has suddenly vanished. Unfortunately, smog doesn't only appear in Beijing. Statistics show that in 2011, Hangzhou, one of China's most renowned tourist cities, suffered 159 days of smog, with smog appearing roughly 157 days in 2012, 239 days in 2013, and 154 days in 2014. Even cities along the Pearl River Delta in southern China are not immune. According to the 2013 Green Book of Climate Change released by the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, together with the China Meteorological Administration. In the past 52 years, the Pearl River Delta and Yangtze River Delta have become the two areas with the fastest growing number of smoggy days throughout China. Since November 7th of this year, Liaoning, Jilin, and Heilongjiang provinces in northeast China have continuously suffered heavy pollution. In Shenyang, the capital of Liaoning province, PM2.5 levels reached an average of 1,155 micrograms per cubic meter. In some areas, the number even climbed to 1,400, 40 times higher than the national standard of 35 micrograms per cubic meter. Of course, China also witnessed its fair share of fair weather. A point of reference is APEC Blue, the phrase was coined after the APEC summit last November, when Beijing saw clear skies and fresh air due to the strictest pollution control campaign. In the duration of the meeting, cars were kept off the road based on their plate numbers, and factories in adjacent regions were ordered to suspend or cut production. China has made hard efforts to tackle climate change in recent years. Its achievements were recognized by Clean Air Asia, an international non-governmental organization, in the 2015 China Air Report, Air Pollution Prevention and Control Progress. According to the document, China's annual concentrations of fine particulate matter, inhalable particulate matter, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, and carbon monoxide all decreased compared to 2013. In particular, Beijing, Tianjin, and Hebei province saw a record drop of PM2.5 concentration by 12%. Economic slowdown has also made a major contribution in China's success in climate control. Statistics show that China's coal consumption in 2014 dropped 2.9% 2 from 2013. It was the first time China saw a decline in coal consumption in the 21st century. The annual carbon dioxide emission per unit of GDP also dropped 6.1% in 2014, and it had dropped by 15.8% overall since 2010. According to the World Bank, more than half of the energy saved worldwide in the past two decades was saved in China. Regarding clean energy, China is now home to the world's largest wind power station. It has also invested roughly 89 billion US dollars on large clean energy generation facilities. Additionally, it has shifted its overseas investment orientation from energy purchase to energy infrastructure construction and technology export. In September of this year, China signed a nuclear power plant contract worth 24.5 billion pounds with France and the United Kingdom. The 2015 United Nations Climate Change Conference will be held in Paris from November the 30th to December the 11th. As the world's largest developing country, China has set a good example for others to follow suit. The country has pledged that by 2030, 
it will bring the share of non-fossil fuel energy sources in primary energy consumption up to about 20 percent, reduce carbon dioxide emission per unit of GDP by 60 to 65 percent from the 2005 level, and increase forestry woodstock by 4.5 billion cubic meters from the 2005 level. However, climate change is a global concern. The situation won't change until all players participate. Attendees of the Paris Climate Change Conference must illustrate their good faith, because we can't rely on one or two countries to solve this problem. Therefore, we sincerely hope that all participants of the conference can grasp this opportunity, place their trust in one another, reach a consensus, and support each other to change the destiny of all mankind. Thank you for watching. See you next time.